to present you about community geriatrics. So uh, I like to take to you to the world of uh, geriatrics um, um, at the grassroots level. So kindly excuse me if it is some basics for somebody and because as a process of learning in the life, uh, I always believe in learning from the fundamentals. So let me go through the slide. So uh, I extend my thanks to Sri Balaji Medical College, C3 Research Foundation. Padma Shri Dr. V. S. Natarajan sir through whom uh, I had been so far in the field of geriatrics and MSD for also giving me this opportunity here and of course Dr. Shanmuganathan sir for giving me the kind words of introduction. Um, I have used a lot of clinical photos for better illustration of community geriatrics hence I kindly request you to avoid photographs or screenshots. So this is a model called geriatric house call project model which is a brainchild of Dr. Padmashri V. S. Natarajan sir which was started way back in the year of 2008 and how this model works is a needy elderly gives um, usually uh, we see so many VIP personalities telling about some uh, conversations that this personality is only a phone away from me. So the elderly the needy elderly is just a phone away from the treatment. So the needy elderly gives a call to the geriatric house call project and um, and that's how it starts and um, this is a project that I had done a year uh, in the year 2013 and I would be saying about the pros and cons of this uh, community geriatrics shortly. So these are our numbers so with effect from 1 May 2011 to 31 12 2018 this is a study that I am simply presenting to you to know about so this team consists of um, an MBBS graduate myself my MS surgeon Dr. Padam Kumar who helps me at uh, surgical uh, intervention and my, I have my um, co-friends who did my did their undergraduation along with me a DLO um, physician and surgeon an optometrist ophthalmologist physiotherapists, dental surgeons, registered nurses and uh, logistics plays a very important role and we need a good pharmacy to help in and we need telecallers and we need some uh, grief counsellors and we need and our system is based on WhatsApp and we need a smart phone to, to go ahead with this. Just I am going through. So this is a telemedicine model but it is not a perfect virtual medicine. The doctor visits the home. So uh, this is not the telemedicine that what we are talking about the telemedicine in COVID period. In this telemedicine the doctor also visits the patient at home and, uh, and another doctor from the center will also be helping the doctor who is visiting the patient at the home to take a concurrence on the diagnosis and uh, doctor visits are scheduled up, nurses follow up are done for dressings, investigations, home x-rays and we also take an out audit uh, of the outcome whether it is good moderate or it is a death so slowly I like to introduce to you so after a house call after a house call uh, a needy elderly calls for a house call and we go there and a triage is done options of hospitalization in our wards palliative care at home or DNR is suggested if the patient is very ill if opted for home care we get a consent form and 100% uh, record maintenance is very important. Uh, we need not write uh, A to Z but whatever we are doing we need to uh, make a documentation and we need a semi fowler scot, a mini pharmacy and all essential drugs which will be familiar and we will be going through how it works. So the conventional hospital model is that a yeah, physician visits various hospitals. Uh, for example, we take an MD, DM nephrologist. He visits at least a minimum of 5 to 10 hospitals giving his uh, nephro consultation to all his patients present the various hospital whereas in this the home care model the physician visits various houses and he sees the patients at the various houses and uh, that's how it works and it is not big why I have drawn this diagram is that initially when I started home care 
there was lot of um, um, uh, some comments and uh, lot of things that this is not a workable model and it will be very difficult to carry on and sometimes patients uh, doctors who do not fetch patients as hospitals are the doctors who are going back home to treat the patients but the entire world and time is changing now towards um, home hospitalization and hospitalization at uh, patients residence so I hope you would have seen these photographs so I hope many of them are not there now so home visits are nothing new home visits have been there for one generation back at least 30 years back home generation uh, home visits were very 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 common but for the past 30 years one generation ahead home visits have come down very dramatically and uh, and this is how our model works we have a telemedicine room and from there we receive a call and home visits are uh, made and uh, a good logistic support is very very important and how i started is many per persons question so the first photo where i hold a placard with myself with the date uh, after my undergraduation from chengalpet medical college um, so i was writing the um, uh, entrance examinations for my pg and um, i have not passed in any of the pg entrance examinations so far and so i started working as a part time medical officers at uh, various hospitals uh, institutions uh, factories and uh, and that's how I met Dr. V S Natarajan sir at um, one of the conference and uh, that's how it slowly roped in and it is a demand supply ratio so there was a huge demand for patients to be visited at home I was working as a duty medical officer at various hospitals namely St Thomas Hospital Hariharan Hospital BM hospitals and many such hospitals I have worked and at the end of the duty uh, patients used to patients attenders used to request us uh, to come and visit their parents at home who, who are very very immobile so that's how it started and uh, there is a paradigm shift in the management of ICU in the West. Okay, whatever I'm saying is very, very theoretical and it sounds very interesting. But do you have scientific evidence for that? Yes, there is a paradigm shift in the management of ICU in the West. Open model ICUs are coming in. Increase in more visiting time for attenders to prevent ICU psychosis in elderly. Avoiding more invasive procedures, thereby you call most of the bugs which are resistant to MRSA, VRSA. So avoiding more invas invasive procedures in elderly and bugs from medical and, and you know the most infective material in a hospital is the doctor's stethoscope and um, shift in the discharge criteria because in elderly you, the discharge criteria cannot be the patient all the time getting back to walk and going to do his daily routine activities so it will be at towards to do his activities of daily living so activities of daily living and so the patient will not be fully fit to go back home so as far as possible is little okay so he should be taken back to his home all this criteria is scientifically boosting our home care model with good success rate so who utilizes us icu interns icu in charges um, in when um, interventional anesthetists surgeons for dressings orthos for rehabilitations oncologists for tapping acetic fluid um, plural fluid at home doctor children for their own parents and grandparents so it is very very uh, interesting and in our model we have three models of working we have a outpatient we have an inpatient who need rehab care for a very long time like palliative care for dementia and cancer and definitely home care the community geriatrics is a winner here and most of the patients are benefited and we call it 2020 match 50 overs match and test match um, respectively so house call where physician can meet the patient at the residence who are who are elderly and they are non-ambulant what are the benefits for the patient they can prevent anxiety bladder problems injury during shifting pulmonary edema while shifting in several patients who are normal at home once they enter casualty and they are shifted in a stretcher they are landing up with congestive cardiac failure and uh, nosocombial infections at the hospital all this can be prevented what are all the benefits for the doctor doctor relaxedly single-handed diagnosis can be made if possible manage at home or else refer back to a single constant nursing home with senior physician follow up the patient case sheet slowly and looking for the missed areas learning and patient and family confidence is slowly gained in so expected peak practice by 2025 2030 what are the scientific reasons for it low birth rates and low death rates have made india and china and especially the whole world as a graying nation why you called a graying nation is that the birth rates have come down due to infertility the death rates have come they have come down due to the invent of modern medicine 
so there is a stagnating geriatric population so the leading institutions eh, both in private and public sectors have started home care almost all private hospitals corporate hospitals do have home care as one of their branch and several hospitals are piping in to start home care they are aspiring and cancers on the rise huge demand for palliative care and great mental preparedness by the children for taking care of their par children are uh, taking care of their parents at the home so somebody who is regretting after taking some pgs in uh, various specialties uh, um, like uh, oncology cardiology and and uh, i have uh, encountered several of my colleagues uh, after taking specialties and super specialties um, uh, that they, they sometimes complain that there is some deficiency in the practice whereas in geriatrics we expect a huge demand shortly and uh, the ongoing demand is there so definitely uh, knowing the demand and giving the supply is very very important so some basic evaluation is done like uh, evaluating the bp one minute pulse rate spo2 these are all fundamentals what we learnt in our undergraduation blood glucose monitoring uh, seeing the conjunctiva very very important uh, auscultating the aortic area to look for any aortic sclerosis or aortic stenosis looking for the basis respiratory basis uh, to look for any congestive cardiac failures or early pulmonary hypertensions uh, palpate the abdomen to look for the bladder area umbilical area to look for bowel zones constipation hernias obstructed hernias and watch for cns you look for the gait rigidity because undiagnosed parkinsonism is very very common in community geriatrics what we routinely think that patients like they have their simple head nodding pin rolling movements or uh, what we call several people in the um, community they think that is a part and parcel of old age so several times we have uh, diagnosed parkinsonism which was undi under diagnosed at the community level and uh, lower limb we look for edema edema lower limb gives a fantastic um general medicine diagnosis where you look for edema you look for cellulitis you look for and bites you look for intertrigo so what are all the expected emergencies in community geriatrics are falls fever unresponsiveness state with breathing unresponsiveness state without breathing different behavior the suddenly elderly starts getting confused they says i am seeing so uh, some people crossing over the windows i am seeing some black persons coming here near me i see some children dancing near me i see some uh, uh, women dressed in uh, a wedding attire sitting in front of me so such kind of acute confusional state is very very common in community geriatrics cancers un undiagnosed cancers lower limb stories i'd be uh, telling you slowly so falls are very very common in elderly and most of the commonest fracture what you encounter is the femur the next you come across the vertebra wrist humerus and uh, you need to assess them whether they are fit or unfit elderly who are unfit for surgery better need not do any surgery for them because even after several surgeries of femur fractures several elderly die within one month of surgery if you find them fit you don't have any other illness like cardiac illness central nervous system illness it is better to get them operated because they can slowly go to their activities of daily living slowly so falls you need assessment you need to see whether they are fit or they are unfit for surgery fever we divide generally as above the umbilicus below the umbilicus above the umbilicus you come across gram positive infections below the umbilicus you come across gram negative infections in above the umbilicus you come across upper respiratory tract infection lower respiratory tract infection tuberculosis very very rampant in community geriatrics meningitis is still seen and below the umbilicus commonest problem is are the urinary tract infections uncomplicated and complicated pyelonephritis diabetic foot and decubitus ulcer unresponsiveness state but breathing patient is still breathing but is unresponsive can be hypoglycemia can be a cerebrovascular accident can be a hyponatremia we need evaluation to manage them unresponsiveness state completely without breathing is a very very important area where a physician is required to give a death certificate so current guideline says that the physician should have at least attended at least once on the patient during his lifetime and preferably the physician should be the last attending physician to the patient still if the patient is elderly and the attended physician is not available still the unattended physician can give the death certificate after going through the records of the patient taking his current records and because um, foul play is very common in community geriatrics because elderly they they are in the habit of writing a will that the will will be in action only after the one's demise 
so the demise is a turning point and this is a turning point for the family so we come across several grandchildren coming into foul play causing death for the elderly and uh, in to get in possession of the um, land and uh, buildings whatever they have issued so definitely we have to look in for foul play so unresponsiveness with breathing yes hypoglycemia low sodium and patients going on with neuropsychiatry drugs long standing neuropsychiatry drugs sometimes patient uh, continuing the drugs without the consultation with the neurophysician or the psychiatrist are prone for hyponatremia very very common and uh, we need to treat the cause withdraw the causing drug slowly this is very very important and cancers what are all the cancers that we generally come across are the liver cancers lung cancers gi malignancy and metastatic cancers of this the gi malignancies have a very high death rate and very fast death rate where the patient die within 6 months to 1 year so uh, telling about the grief news to the patients uh, ask so tender love and care is more than sufficient for the patient who have been diagnosed at stage 4 with metastasis um giving them palliative chemotherapy palliative radiotherapy um in the whatever i have come across on a, in my patient schedule have not given much of a relief for the patients it is better to go in for a dnr status so lower limb stories where well, lower limb is a very important topic for me and i have uh, been very fascinated with this topic of lower limb stories because fetal edema several times we have diagnosed decompensated liver disease anemias chronic kidney disease congestive cardiac failure aortic stenosis several times lower limb edema is the presenting complaint of all these diagnoses and pressure ulcers and bites are also diabetic ulcers are also common i am just yes, yeah, very happy to introduce a small uh, study that we had done in the year of 2012 to 2013 of our house call uh, the random age that we saw was somewhere between 61 to 101 years the maximum population were from females so this is a point to be enhanced and uh, to be understood that the feminization of geriatrics is very very common so because in the population we see a stagnating aging population in in spite of stagnating aging population the long livers are females probably because of the uh, non occupational hazards and uh, stopping uh, no, no tobacco no alcohol so uh, uh, possibly the females are living longer and uh, this is how you see the sex distribution and alone living elderly are very very common in the age group of 81 to 90 years and um, common reasons for a house call is routine checkup fever fall acute confusional state to give life certificate also sometimes for pensioners who need to get life certificates who are difficult to ambulate sometimes we need to give them inability to sign certificate several elderly the bank uh, simply rejects their signature because of change of signature in parkinsonism and stroke patients so we need to give inability to sign certificate and approve their thumb impression so average time to see a patient at home takes about 20 to 60 minutes living with family yes the uh, family patients living with family do call for house calls living alone also patients are there at 30% and um, majority of the patients who are living alone are in old age homes the commonest fracture what we come across is at the pelvis at the level of femur and osteoarthritis is very common and uh, patients do undergo at least one episode of urinary tract infection and diabetes being the very common cause hypertension diabetes combination of both and um, seeing about um, cerebrovascular accident vertigo um, acute retention of urine uh, decubitus ulcers parkinsonism uh, stroke uh, patients with rails tube and uh, copd patients carcinomas chronic kidney disease are several patients where we come in and sometimes and very commonly we also see happy couples also we see in the community geriatrics husband and wife living alone in the community and the children living abroad is a commonest story seen now and as you all know all vedic cultures whichever religion you see taking care of parents is the ultimate duty of every son or daughter which is poorly emphasized in the society which needs to be reemphasized and these are the photos of some happy couples and uh, yes we come across some elderly as thin as them 30 kg 28 kg 24 kg skin and bones and uh, elderly they are very very happy to get photographed and uh, that's how i have collected so many photographs whenever i ask them party konja sering or photo edukalam appdin sonnaka they very happily um, smile and uh, yes smile is last last in elderly it is the duty of the community geriatrics physician to ensure that they also smile and um, yes uh, and now i'm going to take go through you 
so some of the common problems so fever cough and uh, patients having this is one of the very common problem that you come across and uh, sometimes it can be fatal because it can be in a pre-existing condition like parkinsonism stroke uh, stricture esophagus where it can cause aspiration um, aspiration pneumonitis and it can slowly end in with respiratory failure so in such cases signs of improvement what we see is whenever you come across and you give some treatment with nebulizations head up elevation and feeding slowly and uh, they slowly show some signs of improvement like increase intake better conscious level increased urine output because decreased urine output is the first red flag sign of a patient who is deteriorating so whenever you treat elderly at home what is the deciding point when the elderly is sinking on elderly is not improving decreasing urine output swelling of the lower limbs and swelling of the upper limbs slow onset of pulmonary edema in such patients it is better to counsel the attenders about the grave outcome if they still wish to get treated they can be treated until the end of life to have a very dignified death so what is the minimal support basic care that we need to give for the patients elderly at home you need a foul escort you need rail tube feeding air mattress to prevent uh, bed sores catheterization early is very very important so that we can monitor the urine output and uh, and because the decreased urine output is the first sign of failure and uh, change the position every one or two hours to prevent bed sores test heart fermentation the concept of diathermy and tuberculosis still works good prevents a lot of uh, um, stagnating uh, pneumonia so hypostatic pneumonia it is called drug charts as generally we manage them with uh, um, amoxicillin acetylcysteine and um, uh, acibrophilin so drugs like that this are general common drugs what we generally use so a minimal support to basic care this is how we give we give a rail strip feeding if this is a patient who had a fall in her left side from the cot and because of failure to thrive in elderly also is a very very common problem that we encounter so restless elderly patients presenting with restlessness who are irritable shouting with the foul language non-parliamentary words the common causes are acute urine retention the urine can get stuck especially in pa uh, prostate hypertrophy in elderly females with prolapse of uterus and in such conditions you can have retention of urine constipation and unattended gallbladder stone who can have impacted cholecystitis <laughs> so acute retention of urine uh, acute uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry so this is an image of acute retention of urine where you see the um, uh, the lower abdomen is full even up to umbilicus as uh, as far as 24 weeks of uh, pregnancy and this is the amount of abdomen that you see and high colored urine is drained immediately after catheterization and you see a flat scaphoid abdomen slowly and the slide move on again. yes unattended gallbladder stone the gallbladder stone what we found in fat 40 female uh, uh, in um, uh, gallbladder stone who which were um, very silent and non problematic in their young age in their old age when they are very uh, senile and they lie down on the bed can get impacted at the fundus of the gallbladder and it can cause cholecystitis and this can also present as acute restlessness in el um, elderly incomplete bowel obstruction that the bowel is going for obstruction due to hypokalemia variety of uses because several elderly are uh, um, hypertensive ischemic heart patients so say they use diuretics very commonly this can cause hypokalemia and incomplete bowel obstruction and it can cause a sluggish movement of um, bowels and it can cause retention of um, feces in for the elderly which can also present as restlessness this is the sequence patient having chronic illness diuretics diuretics causing hypokalemia hypokalemia causing diminished bowel movements and this causing chronic uh, obstruction of the rectum old parkinsonism patient where the patient had been meeting the neurologist frequently but after a point of time they never meet the neurologist but continue the same drugs and there is a drug prescription mismatch with the clinical scenario and thereby parkinson's patient do present with hallucinations probably due to liver dopa over dosage uh, which is which was not required for the patient at that point of time is a very common entity that you come across 
so this kind of rigidity some amount of faces that you can come across in parkinsonism patient this is not angle mouth deviation what you see in uh, um, your typical facial palsy this is something you come across in parkinsonism patient so the so the drug mismatch is very very common and you need to manage them old stroke patients sometimes after some amount of metal fatigue and some depression they stop all their drugs if the pre-existing stroke was because of atrial fibrillation causing the stroke sometimes patient even stop the heart rate regulating agents like diltiazem, verapamil and they drop in for a second stroke so majority majority of the stroke patients uh, always have some amount of depression and they stop all the drugs and this is a area of community geriatrics where we need to address and we need to restart the heart rate controlling agents so CA patients what are the points need to manage is pain management respiratory distress abdomen swelling because of ascites fungating granulating mass on the CA areas of breast or anywhere else malnourishment dehydration exhaustion are the points that we need to address bed sore is a very very common problem of elderly usually the bed sores found at the home are dark maroon i will show you an image um, this kind of bed sore is generally seen in uh, community and uh, usually it is thought that the bed sore is healing Wagner's grade of grading we come across if you Wagner's grading it comes in somewhere at stage 3 and stage 4 sometimes ischemic sometimes infective with ischemia putting the patient at stage 4 so usually this is misunderstood as the bed sore is healing pakku kattichu kaaya aarichin paathan doctor adnal dhaan doctor ungala naanga koopidave illa appdin solvaanga but later then you come across there is foul smelling discharge from the decubitus ulcer which is a very common problem that you need to address so it needs some amount of debridement and home and, uh, and it needs uh, saline dressings and there are variety of management for bed sores starting from banana leaf, honey, copper sulphate, silver, vacuum therapy, so many therapies are there but the gold standard therapy what is still helping is uh, what is helping is you need to change the position change the position change the position change the position if you keep changing the position the bed sores keep healing and it is a great sort of help because the example that i give to my patients to address is when you put some dosa batter over the uh, tawa and you keep it unturned the, the dosa gets charred so similarly patients who are not able to lift them turn them to their left and right end in decubitus ulcer and several times they end up with decubitus ulcer and they die of decubitus ulcers and as a part of community geriatrics because we do visits for elderly at home we also see some non-elderly at home like patients with muscular dystrophy dukhnis dystrophy so we see some patients who these patients are also essential candidates for home visits and we can also help them because generally this kind of muscular dystrophy patients uh, end up with um, uh, respiratory illness respiratory paralysis and uh, they have a very premature death and it is also still worth helping such children and also you come across motor neuron disease in uh, non-elderly still that can be helped and uh, by here I would like to end my presentation I'd like to acknowledge Padmashi Dr. V S Natarajan sir for um, helping me in day one from day one till date and even in the future in enlightening me on academics in helping in community geriatrics and I'd like to also introduce my teacher Professor T L Anbumani my first year class teacher who has taught me anatomy who has taught me documentation who has taught me photographing and uh, clinical memory because which is non volatile as compared to your soft memory and um, I'll, uh, this is a person Padmashri Dr. V.S. Nadarajan and I'd like to also introduce my mentor Dr. T.S. Kanaka who is a neurosurgeon who has done a lot of research and help in community geriatrics and this is our center staff because um, community geriatrics is not a single man's job it cannot be done by a single person it needs a huge help from the staff nurses and this is our center and I like to also acknowledge my family support because at the community geriatrics you need to uh, go away from your family for the some time in orders still it is still beneficial both for the family and for the patient and um, thank you one and again once uh, uh, all of you for your patient listening and this is our center present at um, near the Pallikarni marshland at Old Pallavaram all of you are welcome to our center to have a look and um, thank you once again rash where patients with long-standing diapers do have some rashes 
and uh, this is after blister if you see here this is the blister that is broke out from the decubitus sulcer and this is the underlying dark maroon dark brown tissue that is slowly about to get charred and this is a charred tissue that you see generally attenders do misdiagnose this as um, an healing bed sore we have not called you but slowly the uh, dead tissue the dead scar gives away generally at the gravity area and starts discharge because you know the gluteal area is full of lot of adipose tissue and um, lot of um, foul smelling discharge do come from that area so since there was some time and this is a sign of healing decubitus ulcer where you see healthy granulation tissue under the underlying fascia yes since there was some time i had uh, just describe one more slide now uh, i'm open for uh, discussion yes, sir, we have an agenda sir uh, we, have, we can run through the quiz sir. yeah we can run through the quiz yes after sir. that uh, if there is any question we will uh, address in uh, after yeah. the quiz sir so request participants to join the quiz. Uh, I share the quiz code here. So Bala Jimmy, thank you.